Welcome engineers. My name is Travis IQ and I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT to study for certification exams, the CCNA. Let's write ourselves some questions, answer some questions we might have, and optimize the use of the prompts in ChatGPT to get better answers and better results. Let's go! You'll notice we're not in the void. Join me in ChatGPT and let's get started here. We'll start with a new chat and I want you to build me an exam question for a network infrastructure and IT test covering subnetting and valid IP addresses. Let's go. Now this is interesting, right? But you're you're saying to yourself, Travis, this would be a great and interesting prompt, and we can answer this prompt, and we may. But actually, what you're looking for, if you're looking for representative exam questions, is you're looking for multiple choice. So let's tell it I want a multiple choice exam question. Multiple choice, single select exam question. Which of the following subnets would allow for the largest number of hosts in a subnet? And it's given me a number of choices here, the 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 .255 .255 and so now we can answer this question. And, and while relative to some of the other questions we've answered on this channel, this may be simple. For those of you who are interested in, in these style of questions, we can answer one here as well. So if we have these subnets here, the subnet mask denotes which of the bits are used for network and which of the bits are used for a host. If the bits are ones, like in these 255.255.255 octets, or in this .192.224.240, then those bits are used for network. If the bits are zeros, then they are used for host. And so which of these subnets here has the largest number of bits used for host? And that would be the slash 24 here at the top. This uses eight bits for host. This is actually, what, a slash 26, 192. This uses only six bits for host. This is a slash 27. This uses five bits for host. And this is a slash 28. This only uses four bits for host. And so in this case, I actually have two to the eighth, which is 256 total host in this space. In this case, I have two to the sixth, which is 64 total hosts in this space. I have two to the fifth for, ants for single select C, which is 32 total hosts. And in single select answer D, I actually have two to the fourth, which is only 16 hosts. Notice I didn't say usable. This is a total number of IP addresses in this range. And so this would actually be the largest subnet. Let's start a new chat. Let's try something a little bit more complex. And so now we know I need a single select multiple choice exam question. covering IP addressing and subnetting, specifically addressing valid hosts given a random subnet size. <laughs> given a random subnet size of 29 bits, so it's giving me a random size, size subnet, right? 29 bits, there's 32 total bits, so this is a slash 29, which means that I have what, three bits to play with? So a slash 29 is a block size of eight. This actually means I have six valid hosts in here. How many valid host addresses are available in this subnet? Interestingly enough, right, it actually gives you two questions or two answers here. Questions, what are we playing, Jeopardy? Two answers here that could be valid dependent upon the question. If it asks for valid hosts in this subnet, there's actually only six valid hosts in the subnet because the first IP address and the last IP address are not valid. The first IP being the subnet ID and the last IP being the broadcast. Use the 192.168.64.0 subnet to generate a question. 
Let's try this. So it's asking me a lot of valid host questions. I need a more specific question related to addressing 26 machines in a corporate environment. Let's see if we can get a, a more complex question here to answer. We could answer that question above as well. There we go. Let's answer this question. In a corporate environment, you need to assign IP addresses to 26 machines. The subnet 192.168.0.0 slash 27 has been allocated for this purpose. Which IP range should you use to accommodate all 26 machines? So this is a slash 27. So we said a slash 25 is a block size of 128. A slash 26 is a block size of 64. And a slash 27 is a block size of 32. And so a block size of 32 is going to accommodate these machines. And so it's asking me, what's the range of IPs that I would use to accommodate all 26 machines? And so this is saying 192.168.0 because it's, it's bigger than a slash 24. So all of the first three octets are, are set in stone. They cannot change. They're allocated to the network. And then there are three more bits in the zero range that are allocated to the network as well. And so the address range here that we can use, if we're using slash 27s, we could use a 0, a 32, or a 64 in the last octet. And so it's actually showing me here, right? 192.168.1 through, right, a range here. And so it's asking me to understand which of these IP addresses are valid. And then it's saying, what's the range? Which IP range should you use to accommodate all 26 machines, given this is a slash 27? And so the slash 27 defines the range. And so it's not asking you for 26 IP addresses. It's asking you for a range right, that will accommodate which IP address range should you use to accommodate all 26, all 26 hosts. right? And so in this case, then, we have 192.168.0.1, which is the first address in the space. That's the first valid address in the space. So we, we know that A or B are the only two that are valid here because dot one, it starts with the first address in the space. We're giving, we want the actual range of this space, not just 26 addresses that are valid. And now I want to know what the last address in the space is. Well, 31 is the broadcast, so that's not valid. So the last valid address in the space is actually the dot 30. So there is only one answer here. You're like, Travis, a lot of these, 2 through 28, 2 through 30, 1 through 26, would all fall in the range of the IP address range specified. But there's only one that defines the entire range, and that's B. Now this is a more interesting question. OK. What if I'm not interested in writing questions? What if I'm interested in answering a question I have? So what is the broadcast ID of a valid subnet range? What is the broadcast ID, proverbially? When they, when they show broadcast ID, you're saying to yourself, oh, that's the broadcast ID. I'm, I'm defining it for you here in some of these questions that we've asked previously. But you want to know, Travis, what is the broadcast ID? The broadcast ID of a subnet is the highest address within that subnet, which is used to send broadcast messages to all devices within the subnet. That's actually the definition. And then it's giving me both a mechanism to calculate the broadcast ID and a definition in terms of converting the subnet mask from binary form and defining the broadcast address within a specific subnet. So not only is it giving you an actual word definition, but it's also defining these things for you with, with a subnet mask and an additional oper operation here performing a bitwise or operation between the inverted subnet mask to, to calculate that, that, sub, that, that broadcast ID in that subnet. How cool is that? Now this is really interesting. Let's ask ChatGPT another question. What is the purpose of ACES as it pertains to firewall rules? So I intentionally didn't even define ACE for you, and it defines it here for me. ACE stands for Access Control Entry. It's a term commonly used in the context of firewall rules. 
ACES defines specific permissions or restrictions for network traffic based on various criteria, source, destination, IP, protocol, protocol, protocols, ports, and other factors. We could ask, we could ask, we could ask ChatGPT to be more specific about other factors. What other factors could ACES could ACES utilize for filtering? Let's continue to dig down the rabbit hole. IP protocol number, denying specific ports, source and destination MAC address. You could do this. We don't typically think of this in terms of a basic CCNA, but you can utilize MAC address. We could do time-based filtering, quality of service. We could utilize, let's say, DSCP, differentiated services code point headers, to facilitate quality of service filtration or prioritization in firewalls. Absolutely. VLAN, I VLAN IDs and tags in layer three switching, all of these are, are great examples. So we went from a broad answer about access control entries and a couple of specifics to a, a number of very specific examples that access control entries can help you filter. Give me an example of ACE configuration in Cisco CLIs in Cisco CLIs. Certainly, here's an example of ACE configuration at Cisco CLI. So we name the access control list, access list, name, permit TCP, host, and then it's defining what the source IP is, and then it's giving you examples of what these are in the examples. And then it's telling you what these definitions are in the examples. Remember to replace ACL name with the name, the name of the access control list source IP, an interface name with your actual values. Source IP is a specific source IP address from which we want to allow HTTP, tra HTTP traffic. Interface name is the name or number of the interface where the, where the access control entry should be applied. So interface, interface name, IP address, group, ACL name in, right? So this should be IP access group and then your name, no Travis or allow Travis in. So we're filtering traffic inbound with this access control list on this interface here. How interesting is that? We are going to continue to elaborate on this for other certification exams like Security Plus and whatnot, but I hope this gives you a really great idea of how useful an AI, chat-based AI algorithm like this could be in helping you study and learn more, as well as generate some questions so that you could answer s example questions when you're trying to finalize your test prep and or do some more test prep because people really enjoy exam questions and I utilize exam questions very thoroughly to do my test prep when I have to recertify or when I want to take a new certification exam. I hope this helps. As is always the case, engineer, break stuff, have fun. Let's do this. We'll see you next time. I'm out.